I'm an amateur mathematician. That means I'm not a professional. I just do it because I love it. And one of my primary methods is just observation, simple observation. So I just see cool things and I like to show them and I like to share them. What I want to show you today is a conversion chart from fractions to decimals, the 64ths on down. Most tape measures only go to about a 16th, but beyond that is a, is a 32nd and a 64th. The 64ths are those tiny tinies. This conversion chart is used by people who are commonly transferring decimals from fractions and it makes it to where you don't have to know the fractions. Side note, I have lived in Europe for a segment of my life and I am a huge fan of the metric system. I know firsthand that it's way easier to calculate and you don't even need charts like this. I found this chart in the shop of an old carpenter, a home builder and a fabricator. It was hanging up on his wall. A chart like this one is useful for someone who's used to reading a tape measure and using it every day in their work. Sometimes observations can be pretty obvious and maybe even boring, but hang in there and we'll proceed from simple to complex and start with the question, what do you see? So the higher numbers are towards the one or the unit and the lower numbers are closer to the zero, as you would expect. Each number ends in a five. The half is the only one with one digit. The quarter measurements have two digits. The eighths have three digits. Sixteenths have four digits. Thirty seconds have five. Sixty-fourths have six digits. In the fractions, each of the numerators, though a number on the top, are always odd numbers. Why? Because, you know, once you, once you get down to the half, there's no need to put uh, four eighths. So that's why we don't have even numbers in there. The contour of the decimals are the same as the contour of a ruler. Along the same lines, pun intended, this even looks like a Cantor set. This is the point where we can observe the digits preceding 5. We can start out by making a chart starting with 5. You can make it pyramid style, where the 5 is at the top, or a Plinko board where the 5 is at the bottom. Each of the numbers in the chart starting with five, have two and only two descendants. See there are only two numbers in front of five, two and seven. You can go through this the whole chart tracing the children of each of the decimals until you get to the last 63 64 and your chart will look something like this. That's pretty cool but we are just beginning to see the relationships that arise from this chart. The first thing you could do with this chart is to start with the highest number or the lowest, whichever end you want to start in, trace it back down to the five. And every one of the decimal conversions trace back to the five. It's pretty cool, but there is more. You could take your observation of the sequence a step further, enumerate each one. Which is precisely what this chart has been showing. Oh, and you can go backwards and go faster. You can work from 1 64th or 63 64th. I personally started at, at the end. Here's what I found. Once you tally up all the orders of pairs, each pair has a difference of 32. The half is 32. 48 minus 16 is 32. 56 minus 24 is 32. 40 minus 8 is 32. And it keeps going, and all these pairs have a difference of 32. Speaking of differences, here's another observation of the differences. Each child pair of the descendants have a numerical difference of 5 between them. But these being the actual digits, you have a difference on each level. This is the half level, the quarter level, the eighth level, the sixteenth level. And you see there's a difference of five. Six and one, three and eight, zero and five, four and nine, one and six, three and eight, and every one of them have a difference between five. 
Total sums of the rows all have an order in their descending. Or ascending, whichever direction you're going. But this one, they double each time from 9 to 18 to 36 to 72, 144. Summing up the numerators also has a pretty cool pattern that reminds On the half row, you've only got one. On the quarter row, you've got four. On the eighth row, you got 16. On the 16th row, you have 64. On the 32nd row, everything adds up to 256. And on the 64 row, everything adds up to 1024. Pretty cool, huh? That reminds me of, of bit counting and computing. And this is a pretty cool chart about the summing up the decimal points of each of the individual rows. And as you can see, their summation patterns go up in multiples of duplications of twos. I'm sure there's a lot of things that I've missed, but I thought you might think of this as cool. And if you have any observations that you can make and put, put them down in the comments, maybe I might even put an addendum on the video. But I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and feel free to comment and start any conversations. I thought it was cool. Thought you might like it too.